It promises to help you lose weight fast. But are water pills just draining your wallet? Dr. Oz investigates. It's a dirty little secret. Millions of women use them, but are they safe? Plus, tennis star Monica Seles. I would just feel terrible about myself. The binge eating disorder that nearly destroyed her health and her career. Was there a binge bottom? Coming up next on Dr. Oz. Today, we are blowing the lid off the latest product, preying on your hopes of losing weight fast. It's a little pill women are passing around. It offers the promise of cutting your physique, toning your muscle, and shaping your body. They're actually water pills. Companies are fattening their own wallets by claiming to slim you down. But are they safe? They're cheap, effective, and easy to get. Water pills. You can buy them online or at any drug or health food store. No prescription necessary. These over-the-counter pills, also known as diuretics, are a less potent version of the same drugs recommended by doctors for problems like high blood pressure, even heart failure. But consumers are now turning to them as a way to slim down fast. The FDA is concerned about water pills being used for weight loss and recently issued a warning saying water pills can have serious side effects and should only be used under the supervision of a healthcare professional. Today, we investigate why millions of women are turning to this potentially dangerous drug. I am joined by Alana who says she uses water pills. If you don't mind explaining to me what was most attractive about them, why'd you start using them? Well, Dr. Oz, I was drawn to it because of weight loss purposes and to prevent bloating. Yeah, I usually take it when I go to events or before parties. I see it as a quick fix that I can get from my local drugstore. So you mentioned a few different times you might use it. If you had sort of looked at it over the course of a week, how many times would you take a water pill? About two to three times per week. Did you take one today? I did. You did? You want it to look better on television? I want it to look slimmer on TV. <laughs> and you, you think it works that quickly? I, I think so. Um, it's, I, I see results, a flatter stomach and um, increased definition. I usually take it maybe after a workout, if I'm going into a form-fitting dress and I want to look slimmer. So the reality is there are problems with these pills. They're even bigger to swallow than the ones that you know, you're hopefully embracing by taking them. Yeah. And so let me take you over here. Let me just first start off with the ingredients because you're going to see them there and we can just start with that. The ingredients on a diuretic, they'll be written here often in small print, are caffeine, right? That's what a diuretic is, caffeine, or pamabrom, or triamterine. You don't have to memorize these names, but these are the active ingredients. Unfortunately, they don't burn fat. That's not how they work. They can cause severe dehydration, which worries me, and they can actually short circuit your organs. So I want to show everybody what's actually going on when you use one of these pills. Alana, come join me. Let's do a little demonstration. So when you take a water pill, you actually pee out about this much fluid. Yes. Go ahead and hold that if you don't mind. And pour it in here. That's roughly three pounds of water, you know, a, a liter, yes. a little bit more than that. Is that about right? That's about right. That's how much you pee extra when you take the water pills? Yes. It's quite a bit. You must not sleep much at night. I am up every minute. Go to the bathroom. <laughs> uh. I may get maybe four, four hours per night. So this is what's happening on the outside. But if you don't mind, let me show you what's going on on the inside. Okay. On the inside of your body, when you take these pills, you know, most of your body's made up of water. The pill goes in there and those fluid starts coming out. But inside the fluid are electrolytes, potassium, sodium, nutrients. They all get washed out as well. When that happens, your heart doesn't like it. So your heart actually starts to go pitter-patter, pitter-patter. It starts to have palpitations. You may feel these once in a while. The lungs go from a nice robust full of air to a sometimes feeling they can't breathe anymore. And then you go from inside the chest to the brain where you start to have frog, little... Wow. And you have delirium sometimes, this sense that stuff just isn't quite right. Oh, yes. I do this, experience that. You do? Yes. Well, this is actually about dehydration. Wow. So when you hear all these things, and you've even experienced some of them yourself, Alana, what do you think about the fact that you're taking these I water pills three times? I will not be Everything is going out the window. I have some in my purse right now. It's going in the trash. 
if it's in the purse right now. <laughs> if I can just get you to stop, I'll be happy. Of course, my hope is to get the millions of other folks who are on board with this. But this is just part of the puzzle. Yeah. There's a second part of this that's a big issue. Okay. So if you have a seat over there, I'm gonna come back to you in a second. Sure. So I wanna ask uh, something to another member of the audience. The truth is, it's not just about the side effects of these pills, because there's something else that we all have to worry about. And the reason that people take them is to try to lose weight. Unfortunately, they sometimes do the opposite. Natasha's here, she knows all too well the dark side of these pills, even when you stop taking them. So what happened to you? Well, Dr. Oz, one day I woke up and I was so sick, I was nauseous, I was throwing up, and I thought I was pregnant. And um, I went to the doctors and come to find out it, would be, it was what was making me feel so sick were these water pills. Um, I started to swell, my legs were swelling, and that was the scariest part because things were starting to happen to my body that normally didn't happen. So it wasn't a nice feeling, it was very scary. I gotta say, what if you had been pregnant on these water pills? That probably would have been a bad thing. Really bad thing. Yeah, yeah, because the side effects alone, um, the throwing up, it was continuously, and I felt awful. I was out of work. I, my husband had to take care of me. Everyone was scared, and it was just all from these water pills that I was trying to do to make myself look better. So. And who, and who finally figured out it was the water pill? Well, the doctor. When I went to the doctor, I actually had to, that's how bad it was. I had to go to the doctor to see what was going on. Well, I'm glad you brought the bottle with you because a lot of women wouldn't do that. I really do think there's so many folks out there who sort of hide that hoping no one knows about it because it couldn't possibly be the issue. What you're describing is called the rebound effect. It's a dirty little secret okay. of taking these water pills. Okay. I wish at least folks would publicize this. Can you get an honest assessment of what's going on? So you just saw Lana. She goes to the bathroom about this much. Is that about what you might go to the bathroom if you... Yeah. If you take this, okay, so you go, you be the bladder again, hold that. Okay. I'm gonna pour this back in here, right? This is the three pounds of water that you'll often pee out. And you know what, on this scale, you'll look lighter. That's great. Okay. So if you don't take the water pill, you're gonna have three more pounds in your body. Wow. That's a trade off. But if you're taking the water pill and you peed it all out and you stop taking a water pill, mm -hmm. not only do you get those three pounds back, but unfortunately, that rebound effect causes you, because your body's parched. It's desperately trying to hold on to anything it gives you because it just got panicked. Mm -hmm. It just got scared. I showed you, your heart was not doing well. You're feeling short of breath. You're having wow. brain fog. And this is what ends up happening. You get okay. overwhelmed with fluid and that swelling will make you a very unhappy customer. Yeah, that's probably what happened to me. This sounds like what's going on, huh? So what are you going to tell your friends if they say, you yeah, know, you're, you're, you're looking okay. What about those water pills? Are they part of the story? I would say don't. Don't take them. Take it from me. Let me be the example for the bad things that happen. Let me be that person that you don't have to go through this because I was so scared. Like I said, even afterwards, I was swelling in my legs and that was the scariest part. So take it from me, people. Do it the natural way. Do it the right way. And these water pills aren't for ladies. I don't think so. Because I know how hard it is to come on here and tell your honest story, but you'll change a lot of lives. Say, Alana, same thing. I love the fact that you're willing to be honest about what's going on in your life right now. It's a big deal to step forward, and I appreciate you both doing it. Let me speak to everybody on this. This is an important topic. I am angered by duplicitous people taking advantage of you. Do not be conned by these water pills. Uh, they will not reshape your body. In fact, they'll cause the opposite problem in enough cases that it worries me. You can find safety guidelines for water pills on DrOz.com. We'll be right back. <laughs> Next, are you struggling with an emotional eating disorder? Is the shame and stigma making it hard to ask for help? Tennis star Monica Seles hopes to change that. How her 20-year battle with binge eating can give you the courage to beat it. Next. Oz exposes retailers' dirty secrets. Some of the biggest stores reselling used underwear. How it can make you sick. Plus, Oz's three-step plan to end your pain. That's coming up tomorrow. of you struggle with binge eating every day, but the shame and stigma make it hard to ask for help. Tennis star Monica Sellis hopes to change all that. She's speaking out about her most difficult match yet. From the moment she first picked up a tennis racket, Monica Sellis was destined for greatness on the court. At 16, she was the youngest player ever to win the French Open, a record that still stands today. And at 17, she was the number one ranked player in the world. To her fans, Monica was a brilliant competitor. 
But off the court, this superstar was her own toughest opponent. Her obsession with food, which started in childhood, began to overshadow her accomplishments. Eventually, the stress and constant pressure from coaches and fans led her to seek comfort in the darkness of binge eating. Monica secretly turning to food after intense matches. As her weight increased, the media started to intensify their focus and criticism of her appearance, only fueling Monica's dependence on binging. Then, tragedy struck. Monica was stabbed in the back by a rival's fan during a tournament in Germany. Although her wounds healed, the incident left deep emotional scars that only intensified her binge eating. And then, another devastating blow. Monica's beloved father, who was also her coach and mentor, fought a losing battle with cancer. She has said of the toll it took, the more weight he lost, the more I ate. Monica grew afraid her secret food addiction was winning. Monica Salas joins me now. Describe what it feels like when you're right in the midst of a binge. It's an out of control feeling that, you know, psychologically, as everybody uh, you know, who follows tennis, I was a very co focused tennis player, very controlling on the tennis court. Yet when it came to my binge eating, I was out of control. And from my mind, it was just very hard to accept how I could be so in control in one area of my life and the other area of my life so out of control. I I'd love to just go back in your life and try to pinpoint when it all started. What is your first memory? Uh, for, binge eating. Yeah. for me, I think it started in, in, as an adult, really, just the pressures of being on the professional circuit. I think as a tennis player, you're expected to look a certain way for your sponsors to fit into a certain category. Uh, for me, um, also personal issues, my father, who was also my coach, so different events happened in my life. And, and really, for me, um, it, was, it overtook my life. I can't even emphasize that enough that... Um, I give you an example. I just won a tennis tournament. It really should be the happiest day of my life. But going back in my rental car, my main goal is I need to stop at the gas station to get my food. And let's say in this instance, it was potato chips and pretzels and go back to my hotel room all alone. I didn't want anybody else to see me doing it and binge eat. And, you know, uh, back then they did not know that it was a real medical disorder. So you know, really, they didn't know what to do with it. And this is one of the reasons why I decided to speak out about it, that now it is a real medical disorder sure. and there's help out there for it. You, mean, you mentioned quantities. I mean, how much would you eat? Uh, bags of potato chips. I mean, uh, bags of uh, cookies. And the next day, I would just realize what I have done and just feel terrible about myself because all the hard work I did on the tennis court kind of went down the drain. And, you know, and my coaches would obviously see the, the, the changes in me and see the that I had a very not healthy relationship with food. And I knew that, but this binge eating disorder was stronger than I was. It was something that I could not control. I hear you speaking about it, and I know you've used the word hatred in the past, mm -hmm. self-hatred. Mm -hmm. Did you hate yourself because you were binge eating, or did you binge eat because you didn't I like yourself? No, I hated myself after my binge eating because I felt I let myself down. Uh, I let my family, my uh, team down who really worked very hard for me to be a better uh, tennis player. And here, all the hard work I've done, I destroyed it in a very short period of time with my binge eating. And this is why it was so hard for me to understand. On the tennis court, I practice hard. I want to be the best. But how I cannot control such a simple thing as eating? Yeah. And even for my own mom, it's hard to understand. Monica, get a grip on yourself. You know, this is such a small thing. And this is where, for me, is a huge relief when I got finally diagnosed with binge eating disorder that it's a real medical condition. And this was not about me not having willpower and things like that. I love that the fact that you brought up your mom. Yes. If I don't mind, I'm going to ask about your dad a little bit. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. uh, because we all know the famous episode, we showed it earlier, of you being stabbed. Mm -hmm. uh, what many folks don't realize is how important your father was to you. Yes. As he was getting sicker, he was diagnosed with cancer. And as you were losing him, <laughs> how did that change all this? Uh, for me, it was very difficult. My dad battled stomach cancer, so here I was binge eating, so it was very on the both ends of the pendulum. For me, I think losing somebody that was so close, he started me out in, the ten in my tennis career. And I look back at all the years I've given up because of binge eating. And this is really one of the reasons when I was asked by Shire and the Binge Eating Disorder Association, the National Eating Association, to be part of this campaign to raise awareness because, you know, we hear all about the other disorders, but not about binge eating disorder and there needs to be a dialogue, there needs to be talk about it because it's real, I'm an example of it, I live with it, and uh, there's help out there for it. So you brought it up, let me just highlight this for everybody. Binge eating is the most common, the most common eating disorder in America. It affects about eight million people across the country. 
and I asked one of those eight million people to join us. Jennifer's in our audience today. She says, like Monica, she fights this battle every single day. Jennifer, thank you again for being willing to be part of this. I know this is emotional for a lot of people. What would it mean for you to be able to control your binge eating? It would, I would feel control because you feel, not only you don't have control, but then I start to feel mad at myself because it's so easy not to do this. Why am I doing this? 100%. And then it gets to the fact where now it's not just affecting me, it's affecting my family. Um, I'll hide food and my husband will say, where did it all go? And I'll say, oh, my son ate it. And then my husband, you know, he really wants to eat as a family. And I can't because I've just eaten so much and it starts an argument. He feels, then he feels abandoned. And my son doesn't eat that great. And his doctor told me that if we sit together as a family, he'll eat better. So we're not sitting together as a family. He's not eating better. Right. And it's just, it's just a mess for everybody. And then I think the hardest thing is, I don't know why it's happening. Well, let's, let's help you deal with the why. Monica, you've lived with this for decades in public and in private life. I'd love if you go over and, and well, give Jennifer I just, a little advice. Well, if that's okay, yes, I would please. love to just talk to you because I can relate to you, Jennifer, so much because um, I have all the things that you said. Can I give you a hug? So. And, and I think it's really important to know that you're not alone. But I think, first of all, to congratulate you for coming out. I mean, it took me a very, very long time. And, and, and to talk openly about it. And I think also for that there's no shame and stigma attached to it. It's a very real medical condition. I would have never guessed that. <laughs> well, same. it took me a long time to really even take the step that you did for me to go to a healthcare provider because I was so ashamed. Right. I thought if my opponents would know about it, I would lose that edge. So I, I was doing it all in private because I was yeah. felt such a shame about it, really, that I was disappointing other people. So I think just by taking the step with your own family and now knowing that there's help out there and that it's a real medical condition. This is why it's, so, it's wonderful, Dr. Oz, you're shedding light on this. So people out there who are watching us, they realize that they're not alone because I felt so alone that's I mean I can't I tell on. you alone because I so, felt thank you so alone and so mad and just yeah. just crazy and you're tired living this way really yeah. you're yeah. really tired living this way that you feel so out of control yeah. when it's you know there's help well this is how the magic happens so. it is no, this is why we do the show because when people connect with each other we're all, the ultimate help and guide for each other so you guys are bonded now <laughs> spread the word right. to the other 8 million people yeah. who yeah. have the exact same problem here. And I'm happy your husband cared enough about you that he was yeah. paying attention. Yeah. All right, Monica, thank, thank you so thank much. You. Thank we'll you. be right back. Thank you. Thank you. Coming up next, are you exhausted balancing being a wife and mom? Has your sex drive I'm tired. come to a complete stop? Take the steps to reawaken your sensuality and bring the excitement back into your marriage. Next. Not tonight, honey, I'm too tired. Sound familiar? Yes, it does. We've all been there. Exhaustion is the number one reason people give for their low sex drive. My next guest knows it all too well, but she's worried her marriage can't stand any more sex excuses. I love my husband immensely. He is the best thing that ever happened to me. It was the second marriage of both of us. We made it a vow to wait to have sex so that we could get to know each other and we wouldn't make the mistakes the second time around. We got pregnant with the baby on the honeymoon. I have five children in total. Chuck and I share the one son together. Sex life went downhill fast. I have not been able to lose that baby weight since I've had Jordan and it just doesn't feel the same. It doesn't feel sexy. The extra weight kind of puts a damper on my spirit. I'm just so exhausted, I'm so moody, I'm so tired. I have the baby on my hip all day, and when Chuck comes home, he's groping too. So I'm like, listen dude, I've had enough today. Chuck, wait, let me do the laundry first. Uh, if I go in for a kiss, she like, babe, I'm tired. Oh babe, not tonight. Although Chuck says I'm attractive and I'm sexy, when I look in the mirror, I don't see that. I just feel like I'm a mom all the time. I don't feel like a grown woman. I don't feel like a wife. Sex is almost non-existent in our bedroom. When all the laundry is done and the dishes are done, I would rather hit the pillow and get a good eight hours of sleep. 
The baby sleeps between myself and dad so that he can sleep all night and that I can get some sleep. We're newlyweds. I would think that we would be having great sex more and more, but it's maybe once a month. Twice a month is a good month for us. Sometimes it's gone two months. I have this great looking husband and it's going to waste because I have nothing to offer him and I don't know why. It's a, why are you gonna cry? Oh my gosh, because just thinking of that whole memory of all of that, all of what people tell you about being married in the honeymoon stage of it and it didn't happen for us. Everything happened so fast and it just went shoo, like a sled. It just went downhill so fast. So let me just challenge you a little bit. Okay. You, I, I heard you say a couple times you just didn't feel sexy. No. But obviously your husband thinks you're sexy. What he thinks and what reality is is two different things. You know, I look in the mirror, I see the mom, I see the wife, I see the working woman. I don't see the sexy person that he loves to see. The sexy person that he's always saying, oh wow, you look so sexy, or babe, you look so good. I'm like, where do you see that at? Because it's not here, it's not here. But which is the reality? Why is his reality not as good as your reality? Well, I'm 20 pounds heavier, haven't lost a baby weight. I'm in yoga pants every day or I'm in a black suit every day. There is no sexy red dress. There is no sexy lingerie. Like, where is all of that stuff? That stuff doesn't come into play. When I'm in bed, it's like sweats, it's t-shirts, it's tank tops, <laughs> it's ponytails. So where do you find sexy in all of that? Well, he's finding it, but I gotta say, I'm sensing something else in the words you're using. I'm sensing guilt, guilt that it's your fault that you're not as sexy as you should be for him. It's definitely not his fault, it's my fault. Jumping out of like mom mode into wife mode is like me trying to jump into these skinny jeans today. <laughs> it, it just- I think they look good, personally. <laughs> yeah, turn around, they look pretty good. You should have seen the work that took for me to get in them. But it's just not that easy, you know? He doesn't deserve it, he works so hard. He's like working 18 hours out of 24 hours a day. And to give him a little bit of attention and a little bit of intimate time is not a lot to ask for. And I'm just not able to give it to him. Well, I, first of all, you're showing your love by being here today and caring about it, because I do you. think it's important. But I don't want guilt to be part of the equation. Okay. So let's first go to the truth tube and talk about medical things that might be holding you back. Okay. And I've got a plan no matter what's going on. Okay. Because right? you're not alone. Okay. So come on back here. So we actually wanted to know what's going on with your hormones. Okay. Your hormones are like a puzzle. Right. And those puzzle pieces have to fit together just right. They can't just be sort of right. They actually have to be exactly right. And you can have a little bit off here and there okay. and actually not feel the, the, the sexuality, the libido that you should have. Right. So we took all those hormones, we checked them. The good news is every one of yours falls in the normal range. Yay. Unfortunately, those aren't the only pieces to the puzzle, are they, everybody? You know, I heard you talk a, a lot about exhaustion. Yes. The guilt came up, obviously, the hectic schedule, the insecurity, all these things are factors yeah. that we gotta deal with. And the hormones don't make those go away. Right. But I have a plan that will work. It's gonna help you tackle those things and the other obstacles that exist that are making you feel guilty and making you feel unsexy. Okay. So I brought in someone I've known for a long time that okay. I really do adore. She's a sexuality and lifestyle expert. You want both those together. Yes. Right, Donna DeCruz, she's here to help. Can I take her home? <laughs> yeah, you take her home with you. You can take Donna home with you. So Donna's got a plan to help you reawaken your senses. Because okay. I think that's a large part of this, this challenge that you're facing. So Donna, what's the first step to reawakening your sensuality? Well, it's definitely part of it. Hormones are definitely part of it. But Tamika, you're so brave and Thank wonderful. You. This red you're, dress, if I could take that <laughs> Well, you have it all inside <laughs> you. And it's not just about one part of it. You're only part of the puzzle. Okay. You're, we are, we're here as part of your team. And we're, we're here to help awaken you. Thank you. So... I do want to add one last level to this little puzzle we're building. Okay. It's the one missing piece that's not here right now. And we can't do you justice without addressing it. Is okay. that okay? That's fine. Let's bring out the last piece of the puzzle. Chuck, come on out. <laughs> go, go, go. <laughs> well, you can stand next to him. He's yours, not mine. <laughs> He said he was working. <laughs> is, that what you is that what you told her? Yes. I told her I was working. Oh my goodness. Fantastic. You know. And I'm telling everybody, like, he's a workaholic. He's not going to take off. He's not coming today. Yeah, he didn't come to watch. He came to play. <laughs> you can hit him harder if you want. I know, right? <laughs> so why was it so important for you to be here, Chuck? Because we're a team. We're in this together. I'm here to support him. 
How does it make you feel, Tamika, to know that Chuck's for, here for you no matter what? I'm overwhelmed. I'm so overwhelmed because I think about it every day in my mind, like, I'm going to be sexy today. I'm going to put the kids to bed early today. I have all of these things in my mind, but my body's like, yeah, girl, not today. <laughs> or try it tomorrow. Try it another day. Uh, maybe another day. Those days wind up to, like, weeks and months of, like, trying but not getting there. And then when I think about it, you know, what he'll say is, well, babe, today, not today. Well, today's the day for both of you. When we come back, Donna's got a plan. I'm serious. She's going to reawaken your sensuality. Stay with us. Next, have you lost the spark in your marriage? Do you need to get your groove back? Stop the sex excuses. Learn how to re-energize your libido. Simple ways to transform everyday rituals into something more sensual. The plan to rev up your sex drive. Next. Oz exposes retailers' dirty secrets. Some of the biggest stores reselling used underwear. How it can make you sick. Plus, Oz's three-step plan to end your pain. That's coming up tomorrow. For anyone who feels like they need to get back to their groove today, we've got a plan to reawaken your sensuality. And don't worry, it's not any homework. It's actually sort of mood enhancing. So if your spouse isn't home, DVR this right now and then watch it together today, later on. Sensuality and lifestyle expert Donna Cruz, the Cruz is back with our next step. It's create a self-love ritual. So you've got a nice little tub here set up here. Yes. They're getting so nervous over there. <laughs> it's gorgeous. Well, there's nothing to be nervous about. This is just your time. Remember that. So you both do so much. I keep hearing that you, you feel overburdened, you're overwhelmed. So this is an opportunity to take what is a ritual, like I'll teach you how to actually do that, how to take okay. something that's everyday and mundane, like taking a bath, and turn it into something that's sacred. So we something won't fall that's asleep. special. You <laughs> won't fall, you'll fall into something, you're gonna okay. have fun with it, but you're gonna fall more in love with each other because okay. you'll fi find a deeper connection with each other and that's what I'm here and that's what we're here to do and it's effortless and it's simple. Okay. So the first thing is rather than th just thinking about a shower, come back to your breath, just check in with your body, check in with your breath. With each exhalation, let go of some stress, stuff you're holding on to. You're here now. This is about being open, being present with each other and being playful. So you can dim the lights, light a few candles, put some aromatherapy oils into the bath, try massaging yourself. How is someone else going to learn to touch you if you don't know how to touch right. yourself, right? Right. So remember, this is about you being a human being, okay. not a human doing. Okay. Right? Getting into that love affair with self. Okay. Very, so she's very by very herself simple. in here. You could be on by yourself. This is something where we're trying to be clear to be, about this. You could be definitely by yourself. I'm sure Chuck's into this out. big time. I just want to make sure <laughs> that the kids' heads are popping up like mommy and no, me. No, this is a know? new reality. This okay. is a different reality. We're okay. reframing the whole experience. So certainly okay. you can do it on your own when you want to de-stress first. It's about being playful. Now you also say we put a lot of stress on ourselves. And to make sex simple, we should follow a 10-minute rule. Yes, absolutely. It's really very simple. Sometimes 10 minutes is all you have. Okay. And there's some science that actually might um, suggest that once you start getting into the mood, things start happening and you start getting connected with each other. So I suggest it's fun, have a frolic. Take 10 minutes to learn how to kiss each other in a different way, in an unexpected mm. way. Think about having, having uh, what stroking feels like. Think about what touch feels like in a whole different way. It's really about you coming back to that place where you feel you can gaze into, into each other's eyes. Try some fingertip touching, something like that. We can actually just try that right now, in fact. Just really lightly gazing into each other's just eyes. Just touching Chuck. <laughs> Nothing else. I'm, I'm, I'm present. I'm here with you. I desire you, I honor you, I cherish you. I want to get busy with you, oh. okay? <laughs> it's simple, just something just to have a little tension and excitement and, and grow together. This is about you enhancing experiences together. And 10 minutes takes the pressure off. It doesn't go anywhere else, it doesn't go anywhere else. That's the basics. Now let's go to the real foundation, I think, what makes Donna's plan so special, which is all about the senses. We're okay. gonna use those senses to reawaken your libido. I know you don't have more than 10 minutes a lot of times. I know that it's not as easy. If it was, no, you'd be doing like it. 10 more hours. Right. So <laughs> give us a couple of very concrete tips, yes. things that will work to reawaken our libido. So let's start with sight and touch first. Okay. okay. So I'm gonna give you a little job here, if I might. Okay. So why don't you, Chuck, tie this bright blindfold around Tamika's eyes. Oh Lord. Because what happens is, Tamika, is when you actually 
reduce one of the sense organs, and in this case it's sight, you start feeling yourself in different ways. Your sense of hearing becomes heightened. Your sense of touch Chuck's is pretty elevated. good at tying that knot. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, too practice is too little too good, right? Right. And now here's where you could actually take that that feather and you can start stroking her in different ways and you'll do this differently. It's not like you're dusting out any of the cobwebs, Chuck. I don't want to get too crazy. <laughs> 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 you can be, so this is something that you guys can do now. Obviously you can start getting more playful with each other and you can tickle each other. Uh, these, are, these are the stages of love. These are the stages of intimacy okay. and it's about you playing, playing with each other and being really open and really be sort of respecting but sort of pushing each other's boundaries as well. You can take the blindfold off, Tamika, but I am curious. Now, you know, it's interesting, but this is people who can't see sense better in the other areas of their body where they right. can sense. And then okay. you also mentioned hearing. Donna's actually a DJ. Yeah. Oh, that's actually really? that. That's why I first learned about her work. So explain how music is an important part of this. Well, music is everything you need. I'm a huge music junkie. I love and music. You love music. music. That's a great <laughs> way to connect with yourself. Now, you keep talking about being stressed and having so much to do. Mm -hmm. Immediately, go to your favorite soundtrack. May I, I've actually made some playlists for you guys okay. and for everyone else. Oh. But you guys know what song you like dancing to. You know that song that excites you, mm -hmm. that you first had a kiss to perhaps, and that mm -hmm. you go to. That's your go-to song song. Put that song on when you come to your bedroom, but also when you're coming home to do your chores and you want to get through all of those things, you can turn, life has on. so many opportunities to kind of turn that into a pleasure, right? Oh. To turn what is stressful and fill, filling you with anxiety to letting it go. <laughs> now you see this, now, now say you're in the bedroom and you're getting busy or in your bath, and you can <laughs> immediately feel the breathiness, right? The spaciousness. Mm -hmm. And you just kind of start, start letting go. You have your own song, perhaps, or your own soundtrack, easy. Then, okay. as things start getting a little busier, let's turn up the volume, let's turn on the heat, right? So this is, music is really the thing that helps you turn on that inner switch. We all like, have wake that. up. <laughs> you can do it. You can, we can, you can have music that can energize you, that can take you from being out there to being in here, right. to looking at each other, connecting with each other, dance with each other, right? Beautiful thing to do. You probably did that in your, in your courtship, no question. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? So come back to Chuck, that. This is dusting music. <laughs> I'll give it that way. All right. Now, let's talk about one more sense. This may be the most important, especially when it comes to libido issues. Okay. Sense of taste. Because mm -hmm. taste sends very clear messages to us. So, Donna, take it away. So we talk about food in many, many ways. We talk about it being nourishing. And we talk about it nourishing the body, the mind, and the spirit. Okay. So, Aphrodisiacs are mm. a great way to tantalize, to arouse, and to stimulate and take us to a new place. Okay. So I actually prepared some things um, here just for you guys. It's nice. really Yum. easy. Great. And maybe this time you want to put the blindfold <laughs> oh, around yeah. Chuck. Let's see how you tie. So we have a little play. I'll get the duster. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But I love Chuck. chocolate flavored strawberries. They're fantastic and yummy. <laughs> Chuck. Chuck. Oh my goodness, there we are. <laughs> yeah, I'm having some height issues. That's all right. You got it. You but, did a great but job. This is a, this is a really cool idea yeah. that folks can do right now and it doesn't cost you anything. Okay. So I just go ahead and teach Tamika how to do this. So yeah. it's about so a little restriction, right? You're feeling that, Chuck, and you can touch his arm and give him some love there as well. So why don't you go ahead? So we've got some Mexican um, hot chocolate here with some chilies. Don't touch there, some. Tamika. You <laughs> <laughs> this is a daytime television show. We're not clear for that kind of stuff. We've got vanilla ice cream. So why don't you go ahead and feed him a little bit of that vanilla ice cream and then give him another little treat with the Mexican hot chocolate okay. next. Open up. <laughs> but that's the idea. You give him instructions. Oh my goodness. So this is about 50 shades of you. Oh, so okay. give him instructions. So he, and then take a little bit of that hot chocolate and feed him that. So you're going to have to take it to him. If it's hot, make it cool. <laughs> let him feel your love. Let him feel your passion. Let him feel you connected to him. This is me. Okay. And I yes, love whisper yeah. sweet nothings. That's right. Right, so Chuck, let that swirl around in your mouth a little bit so you've got that, the coldness of the vanilla ice cream and the wonderful taste, the nurturing, the warming sense of the chocolate. It's good. It's good, right? So yes. you're already feeling something, you're already thinking about something, you're yes, already, we're, we're ready to go. <laughs> take, take that bondage off it, we've got enough, we've got, I think we've done our job here. Oh listen, listen, I, I think you're a really sexy woman. Thank I think you. Chuck is a very wise man for Thank marrying you. you. And a very good taste woman. you got a wonderful yeah. advice. Tamika and Chuck and Donna, you guys are bonded now. We should be working with you. You're going to be having a good time. Yeah. And I love yeah. the fact that you trusted your story to us. Thank you can find you. the full you, plan to reawaken your sensuality on DrOz.com along with Donna's sensual song playlist. Check them both out. We'll be right back. Woo!
Next, award season is definitely eating up, and we're honoring this year's standout performances in the world of nutrition. From rising stars and energy boosters to the best debuts in low-calorie hydrators, the Oscar goes to the best in nutrition. Next. It's award season, but why should Hollywood get all the fun? Today, I'm honoring some of the year's biggest standout performances in nutrition. Straight from the pages of the Good Life magazine, it's the Oscar Awards. The first award of the afternoon goes to the rising star in the world of nutrition. This trend has been brewing for years. It can be found in grocery stores, tea shops all around the world. And the Oscar goes to Meryl Streep. No, I'm kidding. It's matcha. Goes to matcha. Here to accept the award on behalf of matcha is Latoya, who has turned matcha into an energy booster. Come join me, Latoya. Welcome to the show. Thank you. First of all, I'm very proud of you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Teach me about matcha a little bit. Why do you like it so much? Well, I love matcha because it's absolutely yummy. It keeps me alert and energized throughout the day, which I definitely need. And, you know, it's like a treat, but you know it's good for you. You use it every day? I do. You know, what I love about matcha, which is a, a very strong tradition in Japan, is you're supposed to drink it slowly, savoring it. It's got a very rich taste, mm -hmm. uh, but you wouldn't add cream and sugar to this, would you? Not at you all. You would destroy it. Yeah. I would drink to your success. Congratulations. Matcha tea. <laughs> Nicely done. Thank you. Thank you, Lutoya. The next afternoon award goes to the best debut, the newest entry out there that I'm excited about, and the Oscar goes to Maple Water. Here to accept. The award on behalf of Maple Water is Wendy. She's a devoted plan. Come on over, how are you? So Wendy, Maple Water. There are lots of plant-based juices that are out there these days, coconut Absolutely. water being the notable example of a, of a one that's doing well. Why did you choose Maple Water? Well, I have a little secret. I have a big, big sweet tooth. So if you have a little Maple Water instead of just plain water, then it's got a little bit of a sweet flavor too and it kicks your sweet tooth down a notch. And also, it's, it doesn't even have that many calories. So it's kind of a double, a double win. Yeah. It has a sweetness to it. It's 25 mm -hmm. calories less than coconut water, which so many of you are drinking right now. I'm just curious to see if it's going to go from a, being a trend, which I'm hearing about a lot, to something that has real significant proven benefit. It takes a little while, and it's yeah. going to have to be studied more. But I'm very excited about this. It's good. It's when did you first start drinking it? Um, it's not, it hasn't been that long, a couple months, but a friend turned me on to it and I said, listen, I'll give anything a try if it's going to kick my sugar habit. You're on the cutting edge. I hope so. I see done. All right. Thank you, Wendy. Now for the last award of the afternoon, the nominees for the best dinner ending are, and they're in the audience, all four of them, is it Greek yogurt, raspberry ice cream, banana ice cream, or dark chocolate? The tension mounts. The audience can barely host that. They're all rooting. The Oscar goes to Banana Ice Cream. We have a winner. Shakia has won. She has won, Shakia. Come on over, Shakia. Congratulations. Oh, thank you Are you so excited? Much. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm excited for you. There were three ruthless competitors you're going against. I know. And I like all those dessert endings too, by the way. Right. But you won. Why did you win? That's the question. Why is it that the Banana Ice Cream deserves to be the best dinner ending and wins the Oscar award? I mean, why not? Bananas are so good, and they're naturally sweet. That curves that little sweet tooth that we want to have, the little dessert after dinner, and they are so, so healthy. So a lot of folks probably sitting at home saying, thank goodness I can have ice cream. And they're trying to figure out how much sugar and cream is going to be with the banana. But you have a very different way of preparing your banana ice cream. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So what I do is I just get a regular bunch of bananas, put them in the freezer, let them freeze for a little while, and throw them in the blender, smash them up, and you have fabulous bowl of banana ice cream, top it off with some coconut powder or some cinnamon and some fruits. And it's so good. And it freezes up pretty quickly. How long does it take for to uh, an hour or two? It's about a little hour, hour oh, and a half. Oh, it's so good. Your freezer. And you're just eating fruit. So again, this is not real ice cream. It tastes like ice cream. It's better right. than ice cream. It's absolutely better than ice cream. Congratulations. Now, Thank you so much. we're gonna give a little prize everybody. Okay. This is just a taste. You can find all the winners of this year's Oscar awards in the March issue of The Good Life magazine. And everyone in my audience is going home with a copy as well. Hope you enjoy it. I'll be right back. Oz goes undercover, exposing retailers' dirty secrets. Secret. 
inside some of the biggest stores, reselling used underwear, how it can make you sick, and how to stay safe. Plus, battling chronic pain? This show may change your life. Oz's three-step plan to end your agony. agony. All new Dr. Oz. That's coming up tomorrow. It's nearly Valentine's Day and love is in the air. And I bet you're hoping to get something nice from your special someone. Is that true? You all expecting good things? Yeah. They should, you deserve it. Well, here's something that might get you a little upgrade on your gift. Lavender scented essential oil. Looks like this. Now listen, I love lavender for its calming effect. You can put it in the tub if you're you know, trying to increase uh, the issues of uh, being more am am amorous towards your loved ones. But now researchers find that it actually makes us more generous. So if you put a little lavender oil in a bath or on a pillow, it actually ends up not only reducing stress, it might even open up some wallets. You know, I'm feeling really generous right now. Let me give these away. Who wants, who wants these? Oh, cash, cash, oh, they're sharp. Don't drop them, don't fight. Oh my goodness, there, he goes. Oh, Joe's, and one more there. All right, but no one got hurt, thankfully. Nobody got hurt. Now it's time for in case you missed it. First, it's the latest product preying on women hoping to lose weight. Water pills, you heard about them. But here's the deal, folks. These pills do not burn fat. They actually just work to cause severe high dehydration. So I want everyone to know that these ingredients that you see on the labels are diuretics. If it has caffeine, pamabrom, or triamterine, those are diuretics. And unfortunately, this is a pretty harsh pill to swallow on this, you actually get a rebound when you stop them, so you actually put more weight on than you would have initially. So be careful of them. Next, we talked about the most common eating disorder affecting nearly eight million of you binge eating. Tennis star Monica Sellers really opened up about how the scrutiny of her body drove her to binge eating. You don't have to be a celebrity to feel the pressure to look good. So for anyone struggling and who's watching the show right now, I want you to forget about the shame and stigma and reach out to someone who can help. Lastly, with all the awards being handed out in Hollywood right now, I like to do a little presenting of my own with the first ever, drum roll, Oscar Awards. The Oscar Awards today, I had a very tight race. The Oscar for the best dinner ending goes to Banana ice cream. Now, this isn't the kind of ice cream that comes from a garden, folks, all the gluttons out there. This is actually pure banana. Uh, it's you put in the freezer for an hour, and it hardens up a little bit, then you can grind it, and for a little extra sweet boost, you can sprinkle on cinnamon or cocoa powder, mix in a few frozen berries. So all the Oz Nation folks out there, have some fun spreading this tip around at your next dinner party. You can find all the winners of this year's Oscar Awards in the March issue of The Good Life magazine, which I hope you enjoy. Finally, be careful of dubious people online who make it seem like I endorse their products, because I don't. To see a full list of our trusted sponsorship partners, you can go to DrOz.com, and I'll see you next time. Woo!